welcome back guys let's start the second session of this unit unit 8 which is uh, java fx ui controls and multimedia in previous session we have covered few uh, ui controls so we have gone through the list of ui controls then we have seen the hierarchical structure also and then we have started with the basic uh, form kind of thing that we want to prepare this is what we planned to create and this example actually covers majority of all the UI controls that we want to cover here so it has a text field then text area radio buttons slider uh, combo box then the list view check boxes buttons and so on it also covers label here right so this was the planned um, UI that we are going to create and we have started to create this UI also so in previous session we have uh, created few UI controls let's quickly go through those UI controls look I'm not again explaining what is the structure of our application now it has a border pan it has a v box it has a grid pan and so on okay we'll directly focus on the ui controls that we have created in previous session so we have created header and that header contains text okay we focus on the grid pan because this is what actually which contains all the ui controls that we want to see so we started with the label we have created anon anonymous labels we do not have any uh, uh, variable for these labels because later we are not going to access these labels these labels are just for the display purpose so we have number of labels here and we add those labels in our grid in a first column so zero always okay and one by one rows are being incremented here so zero one two three four five six and so on so we have number of labels label is a class which extends labeled class and that labeled class extends the control class and so on okay even we can have the graphic property in this label also but we have seen that graphic property with the button where we have loaded uh, image like plus and minus image on the button okay so that that is the label next we have covered is the button ui control so we have created a button and this is the text that we want to display on that button and the second parameter is the graphic property that we want to set to this button graphic property can be image can be other node can be shape or anything that you want so what we are doing here is we are loading one image icon as a graphic property for each buttons here we do have two buttons one button to add a record another button is to cancel out that record so as per the functionality of these buttons we load the icon also so add icon and cancel icon and then we add these two buttons in our grid okay and i we we set the cancel button to the right side of the grid also so that's the button control later we moved on to enter the check boxes now check boxes we want to enter for the symptoms if you look at the structure that we have discussed so at the end there is a symptoms option where we can have multiple symptoms for this one where we want to have the check boxes okay so we add those check boxes we create a check box for each and every option so check box for fever dry cough tiredness you can have as many check boxes as you want here now we do have multiple check boxes so we add all these check boxes in a flow pen and then we add this flow pen in our grid okay so that's what we do uh, i've added one line here this was not there in uh, in the previous session 
I have set a preferred length. Actually, it is a preferred width of my flow pen. So to reduce the width of my entire form, that's it. Okay. So we add that uh, those check boxes in the uh, grid. Now these are the check boxes like buttons. This is a type of button actually, and all buttons can have the action event. Uh, for add and cancel button, we will see action event at the end. But this is what the action event we can have for the check boxes. Look, in terms of check boxes, you can have a common handler for all check boxes. So we define event handler as a action event here. This is the one handler variable, and we will pass this handler variable to each and every checkbox set on action method. So we have a common handler for all three checkboxes here. Now what that handler does, it is simply checking whether the particular checkbox is selected or not. If it is selected, you can do whatever you want. Right now, what we are doing is we are just appending particular value to a string and then at the end we are printing that screen uh, string in the console output so that was the checkbox event handler then further we moved on and we looked at the radio button for gender so we have two radio buttons one for male second one for female by default if you want to have one selected then you can set selected uh, method you can call and pass a value true here now these two radio buttons are independent till now now what we need to do is we need to create a group for these two radio buttons so that they can act as a single radio button and any one of these will be selected at a time and to achieve that we need to create toggle group instance and we need to set that instance as a toggle group value property for each and every radio buttons so we set toggle group property of both the radio buttons with this toggle group that we have created and that makes these two radio buttons in a single group again we have multiple nodes so we create a flow pen we set that flow pen in our grid and we uh, radio button is again a type of button okay it's a toggle button and toggle button is again extends the button class button extends the button base class and so on so we can have action event handler also so we set on action event so this is action event event handler we are using lambda notation here so e points to direct method and in that we simply check whether particular radio button is selected or not and if it is selected we print something on the console output this one is for first radio button male this one is for the second radio button female okay then the last one the ui control that we had seen in a previous session was the text field a text field to just give option for user to enter a name okay so we create empty text field and we add that text field in a grid this is where we stopped and we have also seen the on action event where we simply print whatever user name um, name user has entered we simply print that name on the console output okay so if i run this code now we will have these many controls on the output okay so we started with the label okay so we have all the labels on the left side then second thing we looked at buttons so we have add button and cancel button next we move on moved on to the check boxes so we have three check boxes here then we have added radio button so we have radio buttons here and the last one we added was this text field so we have one text field here okay with all the um, event handling code so let me close this output and let us continue with the next UI control that we want to see 
which is actually the text area. The text area is nothing but whenever you want to allow user to enter multiple lines. So in that case, you may have multiple text fields. But in uh, if you go like that way, then you need to handle multiple text fields with its uh, uh, its its object variable. So instead of going through that way, JavaFX allows us to create a text area here. So it's a better alternative, which allows us to enter multiple lines in a single field. So text area also provides scrolling. But often it is uh, better to use a scroll pen instead of going through that default scrolling. So we will create a scroll pen and within that scroll pen we will be adding one text area. Okay. Now this is what the hierarchical structure for text area class. A text area class extends text input control class which has few common properties like text and whether it is editable or not. Okay. So text area itself has its properties, a preferred column count, which will actually um, define the number of columns to be displayed in the text area. Indirectly, it is defining the width of your text area also. Then there is a preferred row count, which, will, uh, which is the number of rows to be displayed. And if, you, if, if user enters more than that number of rows, then by default, there will be a scroll bar then there is a wrap text property now text area has two different con uh, constructors one is the no argument constructor which will create empty text area another one is with one parameter where you can pass a string and that string will be part of the text area on the output okay so let's move on to the code part and let me uncomment this code to have a text area on our home sorry so let me uncomment this part we create one text area empty text area right now we set a preferred column count to 20 so 20 is the character length and that will be the default width of our text area then set preferred row count to be three so three number of rows will be displayed if i go for fourth and fifth row then scroll bar will be generated i also set uh, wrap text to true so after 20 characters my further characters will be directly go downward in the next line now that is the text area we have created now as we say as i said i'm we will create a scroll pen here so we create a scroll pen and within that scroll pen we add our text area and then we add this scroll pen in our grid okay one one is the column and row count where actually we want to display this text area let me save this one and run this code to look at the output <clears throat> so this is where we have our text area fine and user can type anything here user can go for multiple lines so if i press enter then i can have the second line i can have the third line and so on and look as i go for the fourth line you have the roll bar here okay and we can have multiple lines and the scroll bar displays here so that's what the text area is the text area does not have any on action event handler fine so you cannot have any event handler here as a part of text area that's the text area let me close the output and back to the presentation we can have the text area uh, uh, text from the text area you using the getter method of this text property okay every class has a getter and setter methods so we will be using those getter methods and setter methods when we uh, write a code for add and cancel button so later everything will be covered let's move on next is the combo box that we want to cover 
combo box is nothing but the drop down list so if you want to uh, give multiple options to user and user will be able to select only one option from that drop down list all the multiple options then you may go for the combo box okay, it is a similar kind of the radio button okay but when you have a limited options you may go for radio buttons because all radio buttons are displayed and if you have a large number of options then you should go for combo box which is the drop down list when user clicks on that combo box list is being opened user selects one and that list will be closed again so combo box is useful useful for limiting user for a large range actually but user will be able to select only one data it inherits uh, properties from the combo box base class and the combo box is a generic class because you can have a list of maybe strings you may have a list of integers you may have a list of other objects and so on the combo box is a generic class and we need to define what kind of combo box we want to use here so <clears throat> even combo box uh, has action event so whenever user selects any option it fires an action event and we can write ev event handler for this one so whenever user changes the option that action event will be fired now you can add multiple items in this combo box and those items those elements are nothing but actually the list so we may have a list or to be specific these list this list can be the observable list now it is nothing but the sub interface of a list class which is there in the java util package and as it is a list it can uh, it is a sub interface of list class it can use all list methods okay now if you do not have a list directly and let's say you do have an array of all the options then you can directly convert your array to the observable list using observable array list method and that method is there in the fx collection class so if you want you can convert your array to list and you pass that list in the combo box constructor so combo box will be generated automatically this is the class structure combo box is a generic class so it has angular bracket and then t t is the particular data type that we want to define it has items property which is actually the list of observable things now it has another property visible row count visible row count will define what number of uh, maximum number of visible rows that you want to set for combo box pop up and when pop up generates that many number of options will be displayed and rest of the options will be covered in the scroll bar okay now combo box has uh, two sorry two constructors one is the no argument constructor which will generate empty combo box and the other one takes one parameter which is the observable list and that creates a combo box with those many options now combo box extends combo box base class which has few more properties one is the value property so whatever option you want to set as a by default selected you can set value property or whenever user selects any option then that option will be set to this value property so that you can access that value later on then editable property whether it is editable or not and then on action property which is nothing but the event handler object okay so let us add one combo box here in our form now we want to create a combo box for the nationality of the person so we create one combo box which is of type string here we are just going to have a string uh, elements and we call it nationality now i'm creating empty combo box right now but later what i'll do is i will 
add number of items there i'm not going for list here so what i'll do is i will access items so i'm going to use get items method so this get items method will actually return me observable list and in that list i can add any number of elements later so i call add all method of the list class and where i pass number of options that we want to add here so american australian british all these are the nationality values and i will i i also set a value which is the default value i want to have on the form to be indian which is actually the part of this one this list okay and then i add this nationality in my grid so this is how i create a combo box then as you know uh, whenever user changes the value in this combo box um, it fires the action event so we can set on action property where we actually pass the event handler we use the lambda method here lambda notation so we simply get the current selected value from this combo box and we print it on the console output right now, now this is just the example how you can handle the uh, event on combo box okay so let me save and run this code to check how combo box looks here is the combo box nationality and then there is a combo box here default value has been set is the indian because we set value to indian but whatever number of uh, elements that we have added here all those elements are there in the combo box so when i click on this combo box i can find all those options here and if i change value of this combo box let me select australian so when i change this value it actually fires the action event now we have that action event handler here so it takes the current value and prints in the console output so this australian value we have here in the console okay because of having that event handler so that is your combo box if you change the value here again you will have that value in the console if i go back to indian i'll have that indian in the console so whenever user changes user makes a change in this value it fires this action event that's the combo box so i close this output and going back to the presentation slide next we want to see is the list view in your combo box you have multiple options but user was limited to select one item only whereas list view allows user to select either one or multiple items so list view is nothing but giving options to user and allow user to select either one or multiple items from that list like combo box list view is again a generic class so you can have a list view for strings for numbers for other objects anything now when you when you select one or a multiple items from the list view then you can find those items in the selection model property the selection model property is nothing but the object of selection model class which actually contains the index values as well as the item values so item text and you can access those indices or the items from this selection model object now selection model object defines few constants selection model dot multiple multiple is the constant and the other one is the single constant now by which you can set the property in the list view so whether user will be able to select single element or will be able to select multiple elements we need to set that property by default 
user will be able to select only single item from the list view. This is the list view class, which is a generic. So there is a angular bracket and T you'll find here. T is the data type that we need to define. It has a one constructor with no argument. It creates empty list or you can pass number of items in the constructor itself and those items will be listed in the list view. It has a property like items, similar way observ um, object property of the observable list. It has an orientation also. So it's simply the Boolean property. So orientation horizontally or vertically you want to display that list view. And then the selection model, as I said, um, whatever the number of items user selects, all those items goes to this ob uh, selection model property, which is actually the object of um, selection model class. So let's look at the code for list view here. Moving back to the code, and I do have that code here. So let me uncomment and have a look at the code. We create a list view of strings again and I'm using no argument constructor. So initially I'm creating empty list view, but just like combo box, we get all the items. So that returns a list. We add multiple items in that list and those items are America, Australia, China, Nepal, Dubai, China, uh, Canada and so on. Now we are creating this uh, list view to have a travel history of a person. Okay. And user may travel to multiple cities, let's say multiple countries. So user or the operator will be able to select multiple countries from this list. We set a prefer preferred size for this list view. So 250 is the width and 100 pixel is the height and then by default use uh, operator will be able to select only one option from this now what we want is to allow operator to select multiple options and for that we set selection mode in our selection model property and we set it to be multiple here okay so by this way we make our software so that user will be able to select multiple options from this list and then we add that travel history list view in our form now as i said um, it has a selection model property which contains the selected items now list view does not have directly on action method or on action property but it has selection model property now selection model property indirectly is a property and in that property user is going to make some changes by selecting one or multiple cities so we add a listener Look, add listener is a method which you can apply to observable properties. We have seen this in the earlier unit. So this selection model is kind of the observable property where actual property is the item, selected item. So in that selected item property, we can add a listener. And whenever user makes any change in this list view, this listener will fire this method so in that method what we do is right now we simply fetch the index values and the item values and we print those in the console output so how do we have those index index values so from that list view we access the selection model and from that selection model we can directly have the selected indices this will return the array of all selected item index. Similarly, from that list view, we access the selected model. 
and from that selected model we access the selected items now this method is going to return the array of item values so let me save and let me run this code to just check what is the effect of list view but this is the list view in a travel history part okay we have america china australia nepal and because of the preferred size that is 100 pixel we have a scroll bar here so when i scroll down i can see the rest of the options here okay now whenever i select any of these items it is going to fire this listener and that listener will fetch the selected index selected item and it will print it in the console output so let me select one australia and as i select australia it gives me the index value of australia as one because zero is america one is australia so it gives me the index value as well as it gives me the selected item value which is australia if i select china then it will change it from australia to china so second line second console output is two and china now if i press control and select dubai also then it is going to return me both indices two as well as four and both the item values china as well as dubai so this is how by pressing control we can have multiple options selected in the list view that's all about list view let me close the output window and go back to the presentation slide next thing that we want to see is the scroll bar look we have seen the scroll pen and that's the that is the item which is being used majority of the times but sometime if you want to have your own scroll bar then you can create your scro scroll bar using scroll bar class so you already know the scroll bar right where you can have two arrows then there is a track and there is a thumb in between and by clicking these two buttons or clicking on a track or dragging this thumb you can change the value of the scroll bar okay so normally user changes the value of the scroll bar by those options by clicking on arrow buttons or by clicking on the track or just dragging the um, the the thumb and all those are the mouse events actually so user can perform those mouse events and can change the values so what we need to do is we need to register a listener for scroll bar value property now that value property whenever user makes those actions value of a scroll bar is being changed and if we set value property listener property so we need to use add listener method so whenever value property is being changed listener will be fired that's the scroll bar now this is the scroll bar class where you can find the block increment property that defines the number of uh, increment or decrement values in your scroll bar default is the 10 value then you can set minimum and maximum values of your scroll bar minimum by default is 0 maximum is 100 you can change it then the unit increment property okay so unit increment is something when you inc when you call these method increment method or decrement method then that amount of value will be changed in your scroll bar okay then the value property so that defines the current value of the scroll bar visible amount um, so width of the scroll bar and then the orientation whether you want to have it horizontal or vertical default is the horizontal scroll bar so that's the scroll bar now scroll bar now we are not going to create a scroll bar but we are going to create similar kind of thing like a scroll bar here and that is the slider a scroll bar and a slider are much similar to each other but slider has few more properties that we can define and that we can show on the screen also 
But those properties are something like a major tick mark, minor tick mark, label it, and then define a unit, and so on. So we will create a slider here in our example. And it works similar way like a scroll bar. But we can access those values and we can set those values wherever we want. So this is the slider class. Just like scroll bar, you have block increment, you have minimum, maximum, you have minimum, you have, uh, you have value property, you have orientation property. Then few additional properties like major tick unit, minor tick unit. Tick is the just indication to user. This is one unit and we will see that in the output. And whether you want to show tick labels or not, like like in a graph you show that this is zero then with five tick marks this is the value 5 10 15 20 and so on so those are the tick marks actually and these are the boolean properties whether you want to show it or not yes or no that's it by default it is shown so there is a slider no argument constructor which creates empty slider and then there is a slider constructor with Two values uh, sorry three values minimum maximum and the default value to be set okay so this is the slider class let's have a look at slider class and use it where user wants to enter the edge edge of a user as a edge of a person okay so let me uncomment the slider code so we create empty slider right now we are going to set minimum maximum default values later so i create empty slider age slider here okay now you can go for vertical slider by just setting this uh, orientation vertical to orientation property right now we will go with the default one which is the horizontal slider now i want to show the tick labels so i make that property true I want to show the tick marks also so I set that property also true then the minimum value I want it to be 1 and the maximum value I want to be 100 a person can be either 1 year old or a 100 year old person okay and default I set 20 year as a age of any person now this is just a default value operator can change it at any time now whatever is the value of this slider we want to show it just beside this slider so we create one label here we create a label with age colon and the default value i'm going to set here which will which will be displayed by default but later on we will use the uh, value property and we will add a listener to this slider Whenever user makes a change in the value of this slider, that listener will change the text in this label also. Okay, so we have a slider, we have a label. Now we want to add these two nodes. So we create a flow pen and uh, we add those nodes in the flow pen and we add that flow pen in the form also okay so that's where we have added a slider now let's have a look at the um, value property listener okay so we access the value property and we add a listener so whenever value of this slider is changed it is going to fire this listener now here we can have the observable node then we can have the old value and we can also have the new value right now we only want the new value here but we can have these three values if we want okay so if you just want to check the difference between old value and new value you can check it here so we have this uh, handler lambda notation within this handler what we currently want is we will access the new value okay now this value property is of type double actually but what we want to set as a age 
is the integer value so i convert that new value to int value and then set it to the text of that label okay so that's the listener let me save this code and run this example so we have now slider here where we want to set an age this 126 51 are the labels so tick labels they are the tick labels and if you can see this slight lines here those are the tick marks tick marks for unit okay then we set minimum value to be one maximum to be hundred so on the left side minimum value is one on the right side minimum value is hundred and we have a label also which is having age 20 now we also set the value property listener here so if if i change this slider it is going to fire this listener and that listener will change the text of our label also so this 20 will change whenever i move this slider so let me bring this slider to 50 or 51 somewhere yeah and you can see the label is also changing here that's because of the listener we set so using this slider i can set age whatever age i want okay and that is what the age operator can set so that's it uh, we have created the ui part of our form which has one text field one text area then there is a radio button all the listeners are working you can see that here then the slider to set age then there is a drop down combo box to set the nationality okay then there is the list view to select multiple options which actually defines the travel history and whether that person has any symptoms so there is a symptoms checkbox now we haven't uh, touched action event for these two buttons yet right now let's work on that now if by by setting all these values let's say operator clicks on add button then all these values need to be sent to the database now we do not have database right now so what we are going to do is we will fetch all these values and we show those values just in the right side of this form that's it uh, that uh, that shows how we can access these values once you access it you can do whatever you want with those values so that's the add button and if you if operator clicks cancel then we are going to reset all the values that's what operation we want to do with add button and cancel button okay so let me close this one and let us create a side panel where we want to display all those values first so if we do have that side panel then we can show those values there so we create one v box as we have discussed earlier look here this is the side pen that we want to create now we will add these labels and all labels are just one below the other so we will create a v box vertical box so we create a v box set a padding and we add that info v box this is just an info panel we add this info in the right side of our bordered pen okay now in that uh, info pen i'm going to create multiple texts so that i can set text with the value that user has entered and i by default i set name address gender age nationality and so on so right now these are just the labels for values and later what we do is when user clicks on add button we will fetch those values and we will append those values here so these are the normal text added so let me save and run this code to just have a look at that right side part so on the right side we have those labels here but those labels does not have any value right yet when user clicks on this button we will fetch these values and we will set those values here so let us write 
the button click event whenever user clicks on a button it fires the action event so we set on action on action property okay and we use lambda notation here so it fires this method in this method we are just going to access these texts okay i text name i text gender i text address and so on we access those texts and we set those text with label as well as the value which has been entered by user so name is there in the text field and you can access value of that text field with get text method address is there in the text area and you can access the value of text area using get text method then there is a gender radio button now if you want to access which radio button has been selected then you need to have is selected property to be checked so we check whether male is selected then we create a string like gender male and if female radio button is selected then we generate a string like gender female so we generate a string and then we set that string in the gender information text then there is age label now there is a age slider as well as age label now based on slider we are already changing the label so right now here we will directly access that label value and that will be the age for us then nationality is a drop box you can have get value method to access the value of that drop box now for list view you know that you select or you access the selection model and from that selection model you can access selected items so that is list view then the last one is the check boxes so we need to check those check boxes whether those check boxes are selected or not and if those check boxes are selected we append a particular value in the string and later we add that string in the information text so all these lines are actually accessing those values and assigning those values to the information text so let me run this code now let us add few data here so i add name here then i add the address then we set gender to be male we set an age to be 35 we set its uh, nationality to be american then we set travel history to china as well as nepal and we set symptoms to be fever and dry cough now when i click on this add button it is going to fire the action event now whenever action event is being fired it is going to run this code and this code will access these values okay and once it has these values it is going to set those values here so let me click on add button and we have those values here on the right side so you can have a look at those values whatever we set here okay so that's the add button add button action event accessing values and showing those values here so that's the um, add button now like we can access these values we can set these values also so let us work on the cancel button when user clicks on cancel we are going to set default values to all these fields text field will be empty text area will be empty we can deselect all these radio buttons we can set this age to be 20 again in nationality we set default value to be indian and so on okay so let me close this output window right now and have a look at the cancel button action event so if cancel button is clicked fire this action event where we, we simply set text of our text field to be empty text of area to be empty then 
both the radio buttons selected false slider set value to 20 nationality default value to indian travel history selection model property and we clear the selection so all selected values will be deselected now and then all the checkboxes selected to false this will reset my entire form let me save run this code have few values in the text fields so something here female value change value change value change and these are the values so you can access those values so if i click on add we have those values here but if i click on cancel now then it is going to reset this form let me click here and it resets the entire form that is the cancel button that's it for today we have completed this uh, covid 19 scan database form ready okay if you do know how to connect with the database you can have all these values in the database uh, actually database connectivity will be there in the next semester maybe with the oop2 kind of subject okay thank you for joining today what i suggest is i suggest you go for all these ui controls that we have used here just today so that you can play with it you can understand this clearly from my side what i'll do is i will upload this presentation slide and this unit 8 java file in the e-content so you can have this as a reference thank you